So months ago on this show, famed Federal Reserve critic Peter Schiff sent up the warning flares about the long-term effects of leaving interest rates at zero for far too long. This weekend, we see what came to pass, perhaps. Peter Schiff joins us now. He, of course, Euro-Pacific Capital Chief Economist. Uh, Peter, you said this was going to happen. It did. But the regulators sweep in and rescue the depositors. Yes, once again, the government has made another mistake in a long line of mistakes. It's because of the government uh, that uh, Silicon Valley Bank was in the position that it was. Uh, the reason it owned so many long-term, uh, low-yielding U.S. treasuries and mortgage-backed securities was because the Fed kept interest rates at zero for so long. And the reason that it chose those assets was because bank regulators kind of push banks into treasuries and mortgage-backed securities because they give them favorable accounting treatment. They don't have to take any haircuts. They don't have to mark them to market. So the government created the problem, and now they're creating a bigger problem with the bailout because this is going to cost Americans a lot of money, not because their taxes are going to be raised, but because the Federal Reserve is financing this massive bailout by creating even more inflation. So Americans are going to pay for this at the supermarket, at the gas station. Their cost of living is going to go way up. If you thought inflation was bad last year, it's about to get a whole lot worse. Okay. Well, um, that leads us to the question, how do you invest in this? And I want our viewers to understand that one of your funds is best in class, Lipper, Morningstar. Everybody's giving it a top rating here. It's uh, the Euro-Pacific International Dividend Income Fund. Specifically, what do you pick to go into that that has given you that bump higher? <clears throat> Well, what you want to have is companies that do well in an inflationary time period with rising rates. We're going to be in that for the balance of this decade and maybe longer. So you want to have companies that have real earnings right now, not in the distant future, that pay good dividends and, importantly, that sell products and services that consumers need to buy so they have pricing power, so they can raise their prices along with their costs, maintain their margins, and raise their dividends. But I think most most important for Americans, I believe the dollar is ultimately going to tank. We're going to have a currency crisis, not just a financial crisis. And so you'll have a much better hedge against inflation if your income streams are coming from abroad because they're being paid to you in foreign currencies. Mm -hmm. And when you translate them back into weakening U.S. dollars, that means even higher dividends, and that will help offset the rising cost of living uh, that you're going to be experiencing here in the United gotcha. States as a result of past current and future uh, risk uh, ex excessive Fed uh, uh, money printing. OK, I'm going to brace myself on this desk before I ask this question. You have always been a gold <laughs> bug. You like gold as an investment. You do not like Bitcoin. You are not a believer. Why in the past five days during all this turmoil <laughs> is gold up three percent? While Bitcoin jumped 11 percent over the same time period, people choosing Bitcoin over gold, Peter. Well, remember, Bitcoin <laughs> dropped precipitously before that rally. So it's really just gone a round trip and hasn't gone anywhere. But I don't like gold as an investment. I like it as money. It's an alternative to the dollar, to the euro, uh, to the Japanese yen. It's a store of value. It preserves wealth. I like stocks to grow my wealth, uh, but gold to preserve it. But I happen to think that gold is so underpriced right now because investors don't realize how bad inflation is going to be in the future. They've overestimated the Fed's ability to fight it. It. So I think you can actually make money and preserve it right now with gold because I think it has to be repriced higher to reflect to reflect the reality of much higher inflation. We're not going to go back to 2 percent probably in my lifetime. Uh, it's going to be much higher than that. And when investors come to terms with that, they're going to bid up the price of gold much okay. higher. On that sunshine and rainbows note, we thank Peter Schiff. <laughs> Great to have you, Peter. Thank you very much. Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific.